Huh. What topic should I do the next video on? What was that one comment about how to synchronize two axes together using gear in and gear in absolute functions? Huh? Ooh. There's also the Sizer Mechanical Analysis tool that was fun to learn about. No. Wait. I bet you that nobody has ever seen anyone try to use a sine function in an S120 DCC to dampen a mechanical oscillation in a system with a fixed spring constant. Yeah. That's the one. I don't need to start by making a demo. Hey, nerd. Yeah, you! Nerd with more hair under your nose than on your head! Well, that wasn't very nice. Yeah, I'm talking to you! Not everybody is a drive nerd like you! Most practice don't even have drives! Yeah, so, but my channel was built on my drive experience. Yeah, and you want to grow this place, right? Of course, but there are a lot of videos out there about general PLC topics. Yeah, but have you ever thought that there might be people that connect with your presentation style and that maybe they would start looking at Siemens in a different light if you did a basic introductory video about working with Siemens PLCs? I mean, I guess that is a good point. Of course it's a good point! My whole existence is a good point! So stop messing around and start talking about how to get started using Siemens PLCs! I don't even know what that's supposed to mean, but... I mean, I guess it is a good idea, so let's do it! Here's a video about how to get started with Siemens PLCs. But first, I'm gonna go pour this down the drain. So, you've done it. You've decided to look into Siemens PLCs. Depending on where you are from in this world, you may know a little or nothing at all about Siemens. Siemens AG is the world's largest manufacturer of automation equipment and has projects in every industry in every country on the planet. They are used in some of the most complex and critical systems, all the way down to simple systems that are only turning on and off lights. At the core of this flexibility is a piece of software called TIA Portal. TIA stands for Totally Integrated Automation and it was the first automation software package to fully integrate automation hardware such as PLCs, HMIs, and drives into a single database. This allows a single piece of software to control and operate all of the hardware in your project. I can't stress enough how easy this makes starting systems up when you're using TIA Portal. I will admit, Portal has come a long way from when it was first introduced. The first few releases of this software were, um, buggy, to say the least. While you should always save your work, often when programming, the early versions of Portal would give you hand cramps from spamming Control S after nearly every change you made. It was not fun. When I was a drive specialist for a Siemens distributor, it took me a while to become confident enough in the program to recommend it over older software that could operate Siemens drives. I'm happy to say, however, that Portal Now has been excellent software for nearly 10 years. Now, Portal will save you hundreds of hours of work if you take the time to use the tools available to you. There is a lot in this software, so it is easy to get a little overwhelmed by all the things you can do with it. This video will get you through some of the first things you need to know about working in Portal. First, you will need to download and install the software. There is a link in the description for the current version of Portal. It's big. Now, not Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 big, but it'll still run you around 20 gig if you download all of the packages. However, if you're only using a PLC, you only need to download Step 7 Basic Professional Advance to get programming on your PLC. As you start working with HMIs, you will need to install WinCC, and if you add drives, you will need to add in the Start Drive software to your portal installation. These can be done after the fact. Feel free to drop a comment if you are confused about what packages you need because, yeah, this can be a pain if you are doing it without help from someone who knows the product line. If you are unfamiliar with Siemens automation hardware, know that, in general, there will always be a basic standard performance version of your PLC, HMI, or drive, and an advanced or high performance version. For PLCs, your basic version is the S7-1200. It is a brick-style PLC that has built-in I.O. Just because Siemens calls this PLC basic doesn't mean that it can't do some really cool stuff, but it is limited in memory and cycle execution time. But 
There are even safety rated versions of this S7-1200. The advanced PLC for Siemens is the S7-1500 and well, it is insane. Now there are some inexpensive versions of this processor that run around $1,000 but the mid-range to high-end processors are crazy powerful, but even still, almost all of them fall under $10,000. The bit-level execution times on the high-end processors get into the 1 to 2 nanosecond time. I have a mid-range 1515TF that is running an entire fertilizer plant with around 75 or so motors, all in around 6 millisecond cycle time. And that's the mid-tier 1500. The 1500 even has in-rack neural network cards available. Most of my videos are shot using that 1515TF processor. The F means that it can do some really cool safety rated stuff, and the T means I can do all the motion control functions you see on this channel. Again, there are a lot of options in the 1500 family. Comment below with your application and I will try to help you decide what processor would be a good fit for you if you aren't sure. Let's actually start to explore the software. I'm going to show you the basics to how to get started with a 1200 PLC in TIA Portal. When you first open the software, you'll be brought to the portal view. I always immediately change to the project view, which has a few more options in configuring your system. Do that now by clicking project view in the bottom left hand corner. We're going to start a new project by clicking project new. I have a CPU 1211 DC-DC relay sitting here on my desk and so I can see what version it is. You, however, may not know that information for sure. So let's use a tool called Online Access as this is the tool that you would use to get connected to a system for the first time. Make sure you are either plugged directly into your PLC or into a basic switch as this tool can look across subnets but not through a non-Siemens gateway. Double click on Update Accessible Devices and find your PLC. Drill down and double click on Online Access. Here you can see what type and version of PLC is connected. You can also set the IP address and Profinet name here. Let's do this so that we can connect and download since this PLC is fresh out of the box. If you are connecting to a PLC that's already set up, you may just want to skip this step and write this IP address down for later. Once you have determined the version and firmware of your PLC and you have set the IP address, let's add this to our system by selecting Add New Device and selecting PLCs, S7-1200, 1211 DC-DC Relay, and making sure we select the correct firmware that is sometimes hidden down in the bottom right corner. Before we connect and download for the first time, let's set up a few I.O. points so we don't have to come back here later. Open Devices and Networks and select our PLC. In the Inspector window at the bottom, make sure you are on the Properties tab and select the I.O. Tags sub-tab. Here you can quickly set up tags for the built-in I.O. We will have a Start and a Stop input and a Light output. Let's connect and download for the first time. Since we took the time to set the IP address on the PLC beforehand, we just need to change the IP address in our project. Click the View Addresses button at the top of the network view. Note, there are three views on this same screen. If you don't see this button, check to make sure you are not in the Device or Topology view. They are important to know how to use, but not for this video. Change the IP address to the address you set before or you wrote down earlier. Select the PLC and press the download button on the main toolbar. This will attempt to download to whatever you have selected. So make sure to have the PLC and not some other device selected. We can now select our network card, select Profinet IE, and select devices with same addresses. This should find the device as quickly as possible. If you did not set up the device previously, select All Compatible Devices to do a search for any S7-1200s that Portal can see on the selected interface. This might turn up multiple devices, so make sure to be downloaded into the correct one if there are. Click Download and it should compile the hardware and download to the processor. There are two things that could cause issues here. 
First, your computer may not be on the same subnet. Yes, Portal can see across subnets, but when you go to download them, it uses a regular TCP connection, so subnet rules apply. Make sure you are on the same subnet and try again. Second, the device in the project may not be the same firmware as the real device. Most of the time, this happens when you are not using the latest version of Portal and you are installing a new processor. Normally, it will let you download anyway, but it will disable any features not available in the lowest version you are working with. This can be very annoying, so I suggest either downloading a hardware service pack for the new version or changing the device to the correct version in your device and networks and download it again. Once you have downloaded, you should be able to go online by just clicking Go Online. If you see an orange outline on your screen, that means you are online with the PLC. Congrats! Let's write a simple program that will get you started programming. For this introduction, we are going to write a single line program to pulse an output on and off. We will write this program in OB1, so let's go ahead and open it. To learn more differences between OBs, FBs, and FCs, check out my full video on it. But for now, just know that every program has an OB1, and it executes as fast as possible based on the performance of your CPU. This program will be written in ladder logic and will use two inputs, one output, one in memory, and two IEC timers. Let's bring in our two inputs. If you press the start button and the stop button is not on, it will turn on an internal bit. We've defined our IO, so let's define the M tag for this seal in bit. M memory is just global memory that is available to every program running on the PLC. Normally, we would want to use a DB instead of M memory, but for this project is fine. Be sure to check out that other video about using a DB to learn why. Let's use this bit to seal in the start input. Cool, we have a rung that comes on when you press the start button and off when you press the stop button. We normally now would put our timers on the next line, but I told you we were gonna do this on one line. Yeah, I've been told this looks cursed, but it works and it shows the flexibility of the editor. Let's bring in a T on timer from our timer operations instructions. This is an IEC timer and requires what is called an instance DB to use. Get in the habit of naming these something that makes sense as it will save you a headache in the long run. This timer will come on after the input stays on for the time here at the input. We want our output to delay one second before coming on. So let's put in one second here by typing in T pound one S. We want this timer to trigger another timer that will cause the output to stay on for one second. Let's use a T off timer and remember to name the DB something because you are on the path to be a Siemens power user. Don't forget to add the time, but this time let's type in how many milliseconds is in one second and see what happens. Boom, portal knew what you meant. In actuality, a time data type is just the number of milliseconds of the time. That whole T pound thing is just so you can use something like 1.5 minutes instead of 90,000 milliseconds. Let's just add the output and download this to the processor and test it. Notice when you download, it doesn't stop the processor. That means that you can load as much code as you want at the press of a button. If this sounds powerful, it very much is but it also can get you into a lot of trouble if you aren't used to it. Remember, this PLC isn't running a video game. It's running a piece of equipment that could actually injure or kill someone. So let's see this in action by pressing the monitor button. It has the little glasses. We press start, the output comes on after one second, and after another second, nothing. Crap, the first timer needs to be reset once it times out in order for the T off to start. Let's add the Q output of this timer into our code. This is where naming your blocks makes a world of difference. Let's add a normally closed contact in front of that T on timer and start typing the name of the T off block. When it comes up, press enter and type Q or select it and press enter. All right, let's see if this works. Just press download to download the new code. It immediately comes back online monitoring because our offline and online are now matching. Let's hit stop to reset our logic and press start to test it again. One second delay on, one second delay, then off, then repeat. Awesome. This code represents most of what you will need to get going for a basic program. There are some issues that I can see about this code that will cause issues in practice. Can you see what they are? 
Drop a comment if you see a way to make this logic better. If you've made it this far, drop a like on the video to get this video out there to more future Siemens power users like yourself. Be on the lookout for the next video in this getting started guide where I show you how to get experience with Siemens PLCs even if you don't have one available by using a tool built into Portal called PLC Sim. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful time learning new things and pushing your limits. See ya. Oh, and does anybody know any good plumbers? Because I think I can hear my coffee complaining about how dirty my disposal is. Yeah. Dude, just stop. Leave that alone. All right, hold on.